Welcome to the Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, and today my host is my daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley, and we've got a guest, Debbie Rambus, who's the executive director of the Compassionate Friends. Welcome, everybody, to our Mother's Day webinar. Mother's Day, wow, it is a loaded bag, isn't it, ladies? Absolutely. It's loaded full. <laughs> Lots of anticipation right now. We've got some mothers there. We've got me with Scott and also a picture of my own mother down there. That's me on the left oh. in the day. And that's uh, Heidi's brother and my son, Scott. And that's my mom down with the flowers on. And then, Debbie, you want to introduce your family? Sure. Uh, up at the, on the right-hand side at the top is me and my son, Tony. Uh, that was, We were in Savannah, Georgia at the time, and he always had a smile. Mm -hmm. And then just below that is a picture of my mom. Uh, she's very Irish, and um, she has the temper sometimes to go along with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tony uh, drowned in 2011 while cleaning our pool. So it's been about seven years now. And, uh, you know, every day we still think about him and miss him. Scott was uh, killed in a car accident along with my cousin Matthew. Matthew was the driver. And they were both 17, and that happened 35 years ago. And I feel like I've continued bonds with him in a new and different way since he is no longer here on the earth. I lost my mom right after Scott, a year after Scott died. I know that for some people it's a mixed bag, and I, I remember early on it was pretty heinous for me. Um, Mother's Day. How about you, Debbie? Yeah, you know, uh, after I lost Tony, I just, you know, there wasn't any holiday that I truly felt I could enjoy, and especially Mother's Day. And I'm very fortunate. I still have surviving children. So I'm not one of the mothers that have lost all of their children or their only child. Uh, so I still have that. And it caused some conflicts, you know, because I was sad. But yet at the same time, I still had children. Right. And Heidi is a sibling. How about you for Mother's Day? It was, it was very strange, and I think that Debbie's bringing up a really good point. She still had surviving children, so, so it was strange because, you know, it was sad, and yet holidays are so important for people, for kids. You know, like, I, I wanted to be able to celebrate and acknowledge that, it, that, Mom, it was your day, and that's what we wanted to do, me and my two sisters, but we also felt almost guilty for having anything positive happen on that day because Scott had died, and it was sad. And we knew he wasn't there and he was one of our, you know, your kids. And Heidi, I know a lot of people have had miscarriages out there. And can you talk about that from a mother's point of view? Because you've had miscarriages. Right. I've had two miscarriages. And it, that's a very, very unacknowledged and minimized loss. And lots and lots of women out there have had miscarriages. And, you know, it's, it's so unacknowledged and minimized because people feel like, well, if you didn't have a relationship with a baby, why, why are you even mourning? And the thing about it is when you, when you lose a pregnancy, you, you mourn your future. You mm -hmm. mourn the future you thought you were going to have. So, yes, my heart goes out to all the women out there that are, that are grieving for that loss also because they might not even have children or, you know, they might have thought they were going to have a baby on the earth this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here this day comes up where you're supposed to honor that and you're thinking about it. You know, it's coming in for you, those different different feelings that you have. I remember, uh, you know, Mother's Day comes on Sunday, and uh, I remember um, going to church. It's a tough time. Um, you know, the music, and if, if that's what you're doing on Mother's Day, that, that can uh, be bringing in a lot of feelings for you about uh, mothers and, you know, whether you have kids, whether you don't. And there are a lot of single women out there who've never had kids, too. Well, well and the other piece is, Mom, are, for you... I want to know for you what it's like not to have a mother. I mean, this is a day where we celebrate our mothers. And I don't know how that was for you, especially early on when grandma died, what it was like. Yeah, the mothers stay when you lose your mother because when you're older, I lost the support. I'm also, I lost my historian. Mm -hmm. um, I love to call my mother up and find out about people. And there are people I don't know about anymore because... 
um, I can't call mom and say, so it wasn't just supporting me as a mom, but it was also, uh, and also getting the family together, uh, you know, it, then the kids have to do it. And it's, uh, you know, how do you get together for the day? And, and who do you support when your mother's gone? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, I felt very lucky that I still had my mom uh, because my first Mother's Day after losing Tony, I ran home to my mom uh, mm -hmm. you know, for the, just for that support. So I know I'm one of the lucky ones and I'm, you know, I hurt for her because, you know, they say grandparents cry twice oh, wow. once for the grandchild that they lost but also for the child that they knew that has lost a child because mm -hmm. we're forever changed. Mm -hmm. Maybe I love that. I've never heard that before. Grandparents cry twice. Mm -hmm. That is so true. So I think we're starting out with acknowledge your feelings like we are right now. And I hope you will acknowledge yours to yourself and to other people. Um, I, we people have different ways of doing it, uh, diary, uh, doing diaries or talking to people. We were talking about before the show uh, that it's a positive thing to deal with your feelings and acknowledge how you're feeling. I think it's important also to remember it's one day, right? Right. And I think it's important to remember it's okay to not feel okay. You know, for a while, I put a lot of pressure on myself that all the shoulds, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. And as long as you're not harming yourself or harming others, it's okay and right to do what you're doing. You've got the day coming up and now we're doing this a little bit before Mother's Day. And how are you going to handle the day? Having a flexible plan, I think that's, that's really important. You know, are you going to do what you've always done? And even though I think in terms of, you know, I have a plan, but it's okay to change that. And I think that's what we mean here about a flexible plan, having that exit already marked out where, you know, like when you sit in the theater and they say, okay, now pay attention to where the exits are located. You kind of need to do that as well, whether it's at church, uh, going to a restaurant, being with your family, where are your exits located so that if it's too much, you can exercise that flexibility. Yeah, I agree with Debbie, you need to be flexible because you don't know what's gonna come up and also you need to remember that the Mother's Day is a huge deal for your surviving children. Mm -hmm. We want to honor you and we want to have holidays and we want to feel like we're enough because what happens if bereaved parents go into a place of complete and total mourning, then we feel oftentimes that we're not enough. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard place for bereaved kids to be. We want to feel like we're enough to keep you engaged in life and, and doing the holidays. That doesn't mean we can't, you can't mourn. You can mourn, but then you know, just to say, I'm going to take a moment for Tony or for Scott, and now we're going to celebrate the fact my children that are that are on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, and if it, yeah, and if it's a parent that's died, you know, you may be really sad this year, but you may have other little kids. I mean, your mom uh, may have died, and you're married, and you have kids. You know, it makes you sad. And how do you deal with the fact that the little kids want to get dressed up and bring you flowers or do something for you to make you try to make you happy again and you don't get happy because you're mourning so well, I, I think there's a certain amount of awareness if you're a child and you've lost your mother yeah so you know that's the other piece i mean how to how to navigate those waters it can be hard and i know i've worked with a lot of kids that have been mother's day was a big day at school and, you know, this, the father had to go and talk to the school. Is there other alternatives we can do? Can we bring in grandparents? Can we do other things when it's a bring your mom to school day or a Mother's Day event? You yeah. Know, how can we create something else, a new tradition? New traditions mm -hmm. for everybody. How can we create, like Debbie said, some new things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like that idea of new traditions. I think it's okay to change things up. I think that's where a lot of pressure comes in, where we try to do things 
the way we've always done them and things aren't the same. So it's okay to try something different. Maybe you're accustomed to going out to dinner. Maybe you want to have a picnic instead. You know, you can completely change it up and redefine it. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a question here from Susan. I'm having trouble because my, um, my in-laws want things for me and I'm, I'm exhausted. And you know, how do I, my, my ex-in-laws uh, were divorced. So how do I deal with that on Mother's Day? Yeah, I think for me, uh, I think communication is key. Uh, you have to let people know how you feel. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say, for example, maybe they invited you to dinner and today you feel like, okay, I could do that. But you need to let them know that even though I said I'm going to be there, you have to understand that I may disappear uh, quickly uh, and come back later. I just need my space. So please be flexible with me. Mm -hmm. I think if you let people know, and also if you're going to like um, leave the room, you might tell family members that if I need to leave for a minute, don't come and find me. Um, I'll be back. You know, so so you give yourself that little opportunity for space. But you know, again, as Heidi said, you got to consider the kids, right, Heidi? Yes, but I I have, I have heard stories about in laws, um, in laws feeling like you know what wanting us to move forward quicker um, than we want to after, you know, after a child dies, after a sibling dies, in-laws coming in and wanting, wanting people to move forward faster because they might be in a different place with their grief. And it's really hard because I think they they can get, people can get frustrated and irritated if we don't act exactly the same way as we did before the person died. You know, it's like, okay, it's a holiday. You have to act exactly how you used to. And it's like, well, I, that's really hard. I can't just turn it on. I mean, I can wear the mask, but it's very hard to act as if nothing ever happened and to go on, you know, as we used to. Well, Chris has just come on with a statement. Um, she says to all the panelists, uh, she said, good evening. Is it okay to miss church on Mother's Day? My little brother says the give, quote, give gifts to your mom part makes him sad. Oh, that's, that's sweet. And, uh, you know, I would say I can t tell you from my own personal experience, uh, you know, we, we went to church on a regular basis, but right after we lost Tony, church made me exceptionally mm -hmm. sad. And so if church makes you sad and you're not comfortable there, don't go. It's okay. Uh, and if you do go, remember to look to where those exits are so you can leave when you need to. Mm -hmm. I, I think that this might be an opportunity to create a new tradition too. I know one thing that we tried to do early on before we went to a party or something, particularly a holiday, was to get together as a family, put a rose in a vase and honor Scott before we left, not expecting them to do that. So if there's a little guy in the family when it says give gifts to mom, maybe the family, or give flowers to mom, maybe the family could do that uh, with a picture of mom there with the ritual uh, connected with that. I love that mom. And there's two things that you and dad did, which I don't even know if I've ever, ever told you, but I loved. One was that you guys would put a rose in a vase, a little tiny vase, just one in a, the front entrance. We knew what it was for, but you didn't say anything. We knew it was to represent Scott. And the other was that sometimes you bring his picture in and move it into a room where it was more present, but you didn't say anything. That's why I liked it. Because there wasn't any pressure on me to, to comment, but I knew what it was for. Mm -hmm. And I love those kind of rituals where you don't have to say anything about them. Mm -hmm. So here's another question uh, to all the panelists. What about grandparents that are raising children now because their parents have died? How are the grandparents going to help to honor mom? That's a tough one because if it's your child that died and you've got your grandchildren there, um, there's a lot of... Um, energy around that so but have you guys got some ideas how I, I, have, can help I have a great idea Harriet Hodgson's is amazing and she has written a lot of books on this topic and been on our show and if you google her you will find her we have talked a lot about it because 
she not only lost her daughter, she lost her son-in-law within like a very short time period and she was left with twins to raise. And she's written, she's basically devoted her life to how do we raise grandchildren when we're grieving mm-hmm. and um, it's done it justice. It's, it's hard, like you said, because, you know, at some level you almost don't have the luxury of grieving because you've got to, at some level, kind of put on a mask, et cetera, and, and raise the surviving children who are really grieving for their parents that have died. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think it's important also not to completely hide what you're feeling. Uh, I can tell you from my grandchildren, they're very aware of Tony's absence. And they'll often say, even though they're very young, they'll say, Grandma, are you sad? Grandma, are you thinking about Tony? Uh, so they realize that. And then we have a little talk about Tony, you know, exchange a story or something, light a candle. Uh, so I think it's better to acknowledge than just to ignore. Debbie, I love that. Because if you just ignore, kids sometimes think they did something wrong because kids are very egocentric. They're thinking about themselves and they're like, oh my gosh, grandma's crying. Maybe I, it's my fault or my mom's crying. It's, I did something wrong. So to, to acknowledge that it's Tony and now they even know. Because you've been so open about it, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's such a great role model for them to show them good grieving. And uh, age appropriate things, you know, think about their age and that Mother's Day is going to be there. It's a reality. And now, what do you want to do? There are things that you can do. I had one family that I worked with who um, their dad had died, and during his uh, special holiday, I think it was his birthday, all the kids wrote a little note and they burned him. And they used the ash to plant a rose bush to, to them. So you could do some little ritual to remember uh, their mom, especially mm-hmm. during that day. It doesn't even have to be too long. But uh, having them write something or, or maybe uh, before you go to wherever you're going, uh, have them uh, relate a special experience with mom or whatever or answer very simply any questions they might have. But but don't I, ignore the dates. I wouldn't put pressure on them. Well, that's great if they want to do that. If they don't want to respond and they don't want to write and they don't want to talk, I think that's okay too. But yeah. I would still bring up the memory of their mother and do something ritualistic around it. But don't expect them to respond because a lot of times kids don't grieve in front of their parents. And mm-hmm. parents get really confused about that. Um, they have a hard time seeing their grandparents or their parents sad. And so they'll hide their grief. And they won't look like they're grieving, even though they are. You're right. So uh, how do you celebrate yourself? You know, I think on this, oftentimes, especially when you're in the throes of grief, you're always looking forward and thinking, I don't know if I can go on. I don't know if I can do this. How can I do another day? How can I do a Mother's Day? I miss my mom. I miss my child. But what we forget to do is look behind us and how far we've come. So even though it's very difficult, uh, sometimes looking back and thinking, oh my, you know, a month after mom died or Tony died or grandma died, you know, you look and think, wow, I've really come a long ways. And I think that's one way you can just, those thoughts help you celebrate yourself. The organization Alive Alone uh, talks about the fact that if you don't have any children, they say we don't have any living children, but we're still parents. And I, I think that's an important thing to remember. You are still a mom. And Heidi, that fits uh, into me saying uh, it's got to be hard to celebrate yourself when you've had miscarriages and don't have any children. Yes, I agree. But like you said, I think, yes, people are parents, even if they're children aren't living on this earth and it is really important to celebrate yourself because as you and Debbie know we can get how we can have health breakdowns if we don't celebrate ourselves and take care of ourselves after loss I would say to you go on the website and go to a live alone Kay Bresington site and connect up with her because it's a wonderful organization of people who are parents with no living children. But I think that I would want to embrace that thought. I mean, they've been here, they exist, you, you have been a parent, you are a parent, and uh, you will always be because you'll always have those fabulous, wonderful memories. And that might be a time for you to create a ritual for yourself 
uh, when you have no surviving children, something that you might like to do. It may just be taking care of yourself, or it may be more concrete, connecting with them, getting their picture out, lighting a candle, maybe uh, making their favorite dish, uh, having people celebrate with you. You know, um, as a family therapist, one thing that we've always talked about in family therapy is that when you're in stress, enlarge the circle. People tend to turn in maybe one-to-one, -one, but it might be a time when you join with other family members for a, a dinner or event, or maybe you work in a soup kitchen that day. What do I say when my brother asks why our dad doesn't join us? Um, he, he's buried himself in his work in the business. Mm -hmm. You know, we see that, don't we? I mean, we, I'm, Debbie and Gloria, we see that, that sometimes people end up burying themselves in work after a loss mm -hmm. and that they're not available. And that's why I'm always with siblings. I'm always saying, and my heart goes out to you, Chris, because I'm always saying it's a double loss for us. We've lost not only our sibling, but we've lost the emotional availability of our parents often. So it mm -hmm. sounds like that's some of what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when his brother asked why dad, so mom has died and apparently, I would guess this is what it is, dad is not going to the cemetery with him. The, just the house staff is looking after us. Right. That, that is difficult. And what do you say to, to a brother? Well, age appropriate things. Again, I don't know how old brother is. If he's a tiny little kid, you know, you might say something differently than it's an older kid. So he's seven years old. He's barely understanding reversibility. He's yeah. barely understanding that his mom, he's just starting to understand that she won't be back. So, um, you know, uh, do you, have you got, you just heard Linda Goldman speak, Heidi. Do you have any ideas about helping a seven-year-old? Well, I would, I would definitely say to him, you know, dad loved mom so much that he's having a hard time. Mm -hmm. He's not here because he's having a hard time. He's sad. He misses her. Mm -hmm. It's hard for her not to be here. So that he'll kind of have some understanding. Debbie, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and I think uh, just acknowledging that we're all sad, but we're sad in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's very difficult for dad to go and visit mom, but you and I are going to do that, and that's okay. And I think it's important to let them know that what they're feeling is okay, and what dad is feeling is okay that there still is the same love as there was before but you're just expressing it differently mm -hmm. and i think you also chris have to look at your feelings around god not doing that and and how it you know realizing that men and dad sometimes do grieve differently and maybe yeah. uh are afraid they'll break down or whatever so I suggest to you that you get support and help from your community. Find those support people that can help you to deal with the situation that you're in right now because there, it's great. I think it's great that you're online talking about it. I think it's really important and, and you're bringing up some, some really important topics so that you get some help and reach out. Well, and there's a lot of grief centers around the country like the Dougie Center that work with children. So mm -hmm. if you have a grief center in your community, you might have a place for your sibling to go and talk about mm -hmm. this. And for you to go yes, and, and answer those questions yep. to help your sibling. Yep. So don't be afraid to reach out and uh, take care of yourself and celebrate yourself and your life and the fact that you are part of this family member that you've lost and that you will always be loving them and do something good for yourself. Do you like a bubble bath? Do you like to, you know, take a walk around the block? Do, there's certain music that you like. Mother's Day is a day to celebrate. Find something that you want to do on that date. I mean, do you want to go out to dinner? Depending on your circumstances, what is it that you would like to do? As simple as walking around the block or more complicated as maybe uh, going out to dinner or doing something. And maybe there are uh, family members that you love that you'd like to connect up with. So uh, do something that feels good to you. Make a list of things that you like and do one of them. 
And Gloria, I'm so glad that you said something about going outside because I have to say that's, that's one of the things that helped me a lot uh, was getting outside. I didn't necessarily want to go anywhere, but just stepping outside and doing some deep breathing to get that fresh air in and refresh my body. So uh, I think just stepping out the door and taking three nice deep breaths helped. Mm -hmm. If, if it's hard for you to even go anywhere yet. Mm -hmm. How will you celebrate your child? What about surviving children? I, I love the, uh, the saying right there. I am not just a mom. I am a mom to a child with wings. Mm. Um, I love that. But uh, we, I always say include everybody. If you're doing a toast at, at Mother's Day brunch or whatever, say here's to Tony and here's to my surviving children. So bring everybody in. So here's, here's, you know, toast to Scott. We miss him. And I'm so glad that I have Heidi, Rebecca, and Heather in my life. I mean, bring everybody in and include the family system, not just the person that died. Because when you just include the person that died, we wonder about us. Um, when you have 400 pictures in your house of the person that died and one of us, that, that, that hurts us. So just remember, remember the surviving children also and include them. You know, I think that's so important to achieve that balance. Uh, obviously, the hurt that we have most immediately is from the loss. But as you said, Heidi, you know, we have to acknowledge our living children as well. Uh, you know, I've heard that children have said, I wish it was me. You know, and, and I think that m that is more a plea of, you know, what about me? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it is difficult, but we have to balance that in order to celebrate everyone's life. It's going to be tough. Um, well, if it's your first year, second year, it's, it's going to be hard, uh, you know, going to places like church or, or dinners that you've had or those traditional Mother's Day things that you had. And some people celebrate longer. They do something on Saturday and then something on Sunday. And depending on what you do and what your family's done, you really have to take an assessment of what you can do now, what you can't. If you were the one that fixed dinner, you need to bring people in to help. Uh, family members can be so helpful on these kinds of holidays to give you a break. Some people have little kids and they need a rest. Uh, and you've got resources, have people come in and help you out during that day because I think exhaustion is, is one of the big issues for all of us. And I like that you said bring in help if you have surviving small children. Because if you're a grieving mom and you have little kids, it's really hard. I don't know, you know, how you want to think about your mother. And some people are ambivalent about their mothers. I mean, we're talking today like everybody loves their mother. And there's some people who have some angry, pretty angry feelings about their mother. And, uh, you know, you have to deal with those. You know, there, there may be a way that you want to deal with those or not. Some people tell me that they forget the day completely and they don't have other kids and they go to the beach, which is fine mm -hmm. if you can do it, if, if it's, you know, if you have the opportunity to do it. I think, I think it's hard when it's, it was an ambivalent relationship. Mm -hmm. We see ambivalent relationships with siblings um, and with the mom, a mother, it's hard because there's unfinished business mm -hmm. and now you're not going to be able to work it through. And I think that's also a loss because, you know, relationships change throughout the life course. You know, they change, they evolve, they, you know, you move in and out of closeness and distance and all that stuff. So you can't, there's a lot of unresolved things, unresolved issues when a mom dies and you had an ambivalent relationship. And yeah, and you need to recognize that because it's very confusing uh, because, you know, we're supposed to be celebrating this day and I didn't have, you know, uh, a, a good relationship. So that's the time when you might want to reach out, get some therapy, uh, or work with some people, join a group. Uh, there are a lot of groups that hospices have groups, and it, this might be a day for you just to reassess yourself. You no, know, I think it is difficult, and often it, again, we've talked about this, it's the anticipation of the day. Uh, to me, these special days seem worse coming up to the day itself. And then once I reach the day, 
it's not as bad. So mm -hmm. I think calming ourselves as the day is approaching, making some flexible plans on what we might want to do and what we might want to avoid. Mm -hmm. And this might be a fun day. I mean, let's say that you had a great relationship or whatever. Uh, you can have dinner and write down fun stories and put them in a jar about mothers and go around and talk about them. Or you can go around the table and ask people to talk about their mothers. There are all sorts of activities that, that you can do around this day if you, if you feel like you want to. But the most important thing is to be gentle with yourself. How can you take care of yourself? Debbie, how do you take care of yourself? Well, for me, it's just thinking about, you know, I have the tendency to put expectations out there. Uh, you know, it's not anything I necessarily consciously think about, but I expect my son to act this way. I expect my daughter to act this way. And I think once you remove all of those expectations, you are gentler with yourself. And if you have no expectations, you'll never be disappointed. So I think stop putting expectations on the behavior of others, and then that allows you to be gentle with yourself. We judge ourselves. We have expectations and we also judge ourselves. I should be doing this, I should be doing that, I should say this, I should have said that, you know. So I mean, not, you know, the whole, whole thing of not shitting on ourselves and mm -hmm. not not judging our our grief because i think we're very hard on ourselves i think we're we're often our own worst critics mm -hmm. i think that's good and, and this mother's day i'm not going to have any of my children with me mm -hmm. and i think that's one thing you do have to give up in this society now where people are living all over the world and you know you may not get the honor as the mother that you think you deserve and so you have to think about you know what you want to do for the day i used to when the family was home i'd cook a big meal and all that kind of thing and and we're going out to dinner and I, i'm very happy and it's just going to be low key and i'm going to be really gentle with myself and i'm going to have a wonderful relaxing day and i love this show because i'm also going to be thinking about my mother which this yeah. show's made me stop and do that which i love yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, so that'll be great. So I'm going to do things that I want to do. I you know, and Heidi mentioned that already as far as shooting ourselves, you know, that, um, you know, we judge, you know, how much progress we've made. I should be farther along in my grief. Uh, I shouldn't be crying. I should be crying. And uh, if we get rid of those and stop judging ourselves, and also judging others. Uh, people say the darndest things, and it makes us mad, some of the things, like God needed another another angel. Well, why didn't he pick yours? Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I think we have to, instead of judging what they say, uh, maybe listen to their intent. They're really trying to help us. They just don't know. Uh, so, it's hard though. It's not an easy thing to do. Well, and I think it's hard when you've had a sibling or a child die or any family member and you see all these other people that haven't because things that Mother's Day can bring up jealousy. Jealousy of families that don't have a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're looking around seeing all these families celebrating and with social media, you can't get away from it. Everybody's posting all these grand pictures of their families and there's, there hasn't been a loss. And I think that can, that can be really hard. On families that are struggling and have had a loss oh yeah facebook's gonna have all these things on all these cute mother things and how oh, wonderful yes. mothers <laughs> are and it's gonna be on and on don't be ashamed to tell your story i thought that was really important you know i think it's important uh you know to tell your story uh to you know you're going to get the question if it's if you've lost a child of how many children do you have mm -hmm. and and you stumble over that initially. Uh, and of course, you'll always have the same number that you did have. Uh, so, you know, you just have to be careful uh, that you, it's okay to tell your story and, and how you tell it is fine. Initially, I did what I called cry talk. 
I don't know that anyone could understand me, but they, you know, they'd often then follow up with, oh, what happened? And then I'd be like, he, he drowned at our pool. And, you know, but I told my story. They may not have understood that I got it out and it helped me in the long run. Mm -hmm. I like what you're saying, Debbie. So it's okay to cry talk. You don't yeah. have to be articulate because you're doing it for you, not for that other person. It's okay to do that. And eventually you won't, you'll be in a place where you'll be able to tell your story. It's hard to put it. It's hard to tell your story because it almost, it's almost like it's real. You're like, wow, this really happened. Scott died in a car accident and Tony drowned. I mean, this, it's weird to tell people, you know, yes. and it's very hard to tell people. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say for adults who have lost parents too, don't be afraid to tell people that you are sad about your 90 year old mother dying. Yes. I, I mean, because people really downplay those kind of, Oh, well, yeah, she lived a good life, you know, I, I, and, and you miss them and you miss them. I agree, mom. And, and who are you without your mom? You've never known this world without your mom on it, on the planet. Right. So you've never known. Right. And, and it doesn't matter if they're, if they're 90 years old, that means you've had them around a long time and you really, you miss them a lot. It doesn't matter how old they are. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be afraid or ashamed to say, I miss them. I miss them because uh, other people will be inspired to know that other people are feeling like they do. I send you rainbows, butterflies, and many other signs from heaven throughout the year. This Mother's Day, I just want to send you all my love. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so special. It's, it's remembering their life. It's remembering the love. Um, you know, the person that started Mother's Day, Anna Jarvis, uh, she had said that uh, the carnation is the flower for Mother's Day because it doesn't drop its petals, but it hugs them to its heart as it dies. And so too, mothers hug their children to their hearts, their mother love never dying. Wow. Yeah, Debbie, well, let's close the show on that. Thank you so much. And we want to thank everybody for watching this webinar today. And please tell people about it. It'll be on the front page of our landing page of Open to Hope and on the Compassionate Friends website. And Debbie Rambus, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Debbie. And Heidi, thank you. Thanks, Mom. Heidi and I and Debbie want to remind you all that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own and take care of yourself. And God bless.